can I turn this ordinary item into the perfect spooky decor piece? I'll let you be the judge of that, but first let's see what's inside and then we'll get our spooky makeover happening. Hello, my name is Shelby and I'm a potter. I found this bulk lot of slip casting molds and one by one I'm pouring them up to reveal whatever is inside and then finish it into an artwork. This is the mystery mold series. So let's see what's in today's episode. All right, it's time to open this one. So let's go for it. So this has got three holes. Oh, lovely. We've got some cute little flower bud vases. I really like those. They are going to be magnificent with some florals on them. Oh my gosh, and all the dried flowers you could put in these would be just so beautiful. You know what? These kind of have a bit of a potion bottle shape, which I think could be fun to play with and get a little cork that goes in the top. Oh, that would be awesome. Oh, look at this one. It's really rectangular. I wouldn't pick this one out, but I feel like as a set, oh, I want to see what they look like. That is cool. Look at them. I'm very happy with this piece. I feel like I want to turn them into some potion bottles just because of their weird like decantering style shape as well. And I just, you know what? It reminds me of, um, pull the lever, crap. <laughs> oh, it's out of Empress New Groove. What's her name? Esma. I think I want to try that as well as some floral ones, but let's get painting. Here is a look at the mold for anyone trying to find it. I think if I knew this mold existed, I would be hunting this one down because these bud vases are such a lovely shape and the three different options are all beautiful. I am so impressed with this mold and in fact, if it wasn't Halloween, I would go absolutely bananas on doing some really fun patterning on these but I'm using Halloween as a good theme and direction for the designs on these pieces this week. So to get my potion bottle aesthetic I first trimmed off all the excess parts so the seam lines and the tops and then began using some of the excess off cuts to make a little ball of clay and I'm turning this into some little labels that I'm going to attach on the bottles. I wanted the labels to be a 3D label rather than just sort of like writing on the bottle because I want to cover the bottle in the patterns that represent what is actually in the potion and what the potion label says. I start by rolling the ball of clay out and cut the labels to size. I had a bit of a play around with different shapes and sizes but I really settled on these really large rectangular bits and then for the angular vase I did a really small rectangle because other ones looked a bit too chonky on the front which means they're going to be really short worded potions which is okay but I really want a bigger label for the other two because I wanted a lot of room to decorate and really make a bold label. At this point I wasn't really sure what I was doing for the potion so I wanted to make sure that I had a really big space in case the potion words were really long or if I was going to put like a whole paragraph or an ingredients list on them. Once they were all dry and ready for underglazing, I drew out some sketches on a piece of paper about what potions I wanted to do and I actually asked for your help on social media so on the community page, I asked you what you would use a potion for. If you could have a potion for absolutely anything in life, what would it be? And you guys showed up with some really great suggestions and some really quirky and cool ideas that I could explore on these potion bottles. And so I'm going to talk through each of these bottles. I think I made 12 in total. It felt like a lot. It, it seemed like a lot because every single one took a whole day because I was so invested in getting this really cool aesthetic for every every single one and really matching the design to what the potion did. I will be talking through what each potion is and what they do and I guess like a bit of the pros and the cons. Before I start talking about every which potion, I would love to know in the comments what you would love a potion for if you weren't a part of that community page discussion. Pop them below and also if you would use any of these potions that I am making today. So they're not ingredients to make a potion but rather vases that are full of the 
the potion that's already made like I'm almost like a witch that's like handing these ready-made potions out the first vases I did were actually the rectangular ones and that was because they had such a small label I wanted to make sure that I had some really clear words to use on those so the first one is a love potion of course we had to do the love and that is to just make anyone fall in love with you that kind of idea of finding your crush and Prince Charming and all of that kind of fairy tale-esque stuff and so for that design I did these sort of like retro bold beating hearts all over the piece and did like a soft pink background the second angular vase I did was the death potion I knew that it was a bit brutal but I softened the aesthetic of it without it seeming so like harsh <laughs> by actually sort of playing into a Tim Burton-esque The Nightmare Before Christmas or like Corpse Bride aesthetic by doing these funky shaped skulls but then doing the font in a very cool fun cursive aesthetic. This is the most brutal potion I have and I had a lot of fun with this one. This one turned out exactly how I imagined it in my head. The next one I did was a time potion and the time potion is to allow yourself more time in all I aspects of life and I guess the cons of that is that you could move too far into the future and see your death or go too far in the past and get into trouble I don't know there's just so much that could go wrong or you could like run into your previous self and like mess up the whole time continuum I guess that's like a con of it but like time wise like I would love a little bit of extra time in the day or like for time to move a little bit slower so I can get a bit more done every day that would be so nice and then the fourth angular vase I didn't actually film because it was really tricky to film is I did duplicate and this vase was the idea of duplicating yourself so you have one of you going on this interview whilst the other of you is sitting at home watching TV or something like another person that's doing the jobs you don't want to do and that was a bit tricky to film because I had to get the symmetry exactly right on each butterfly wing you'll see it's like a butterfly wing that's like kind of mirrored on both sides and it was really tricky I don't really think I nailed the symmetry but it looks really cool I think it's you get the point of what the duplicate of the wings looks like and why that was the design choice I was really grateful to have the little sketches that I did because they really helped keep my direction very clear for each inspiration because these are like individual artworks I'm changing the whole aesthetic for every single piece the next vases I worked on were the sort of like round and stubby ones and the first one I did was the this vining uh, plant around it and this is called the botanist brew so the idea of the botanist brew is that you can understand and know how to take care of any single plant you come into contact with and like I would love this because I would love to be able to grow like the most hectic veggie garden and know exactly what every single plant needs like oh it needs more potassium in the soil it needs more magnesium you know like I would love to know that to make sure that all my plants thrive and also like when they need need watering in the house or when they need more nutrients that would just be the best I would love this potion <laughs> the side effect of this is that you could end up overgrowing them and then being so healthy that they take over your whole house and your whole backyard so the next one I did these really big thought bubbles and I filled them in with things that you often forget to do or things that you should remember so this is actually going to be the remember refreshment potion and it's got things on there like remember to take your meds remember where your keys are you lost your remote it helps you remember that helps you remember due dates birthdays that cup of coffee that is getting cold it reminds you that you need to drink it before it gets cold all that kind of stuff oh people's names I am really bad with people's names so I had to put that on there oh to drink enough water to water your plants again there's a theme there with the plant watering my plants are very okay they just sometimes get a bit thirsty I promise they're alive. <laughs> so that one was really fun. I did do the illustrations on those little thought bubbles, but as I was looking at them, I felt that they needed a black outline as well, just to really make them pop against the bottle. And I'm so glad I did that as well. The next potion bottle I did was this washing line with all the washing on it. And it is a wonder washing potion. This is a potion that helps you do your washing. So it not only cleans, washes and dries, 
dries it, it also folds it and puts it away. I just find sometimes that pile of washing can get a little bit daunting and you just don't want to get into it and it gets overwhelming. So this just does it all for you. So this is the Wonder Wash version. And you know what? I was like, Wonder Wash. I was trying to think of really fun, like play on words for all these potions so that they kind of rhyme or they have the same starting letter. And I was looking at Wonder Wash. I was like, surely there's a brand of laundry that's called Wonder Wash, but I couldn't see one. So if you're into the laundry biz, maybe you should claim that Wonder Wash name. Maybe there is, and my Australian search is biased and there is a Wonder Wash in the US or something. I'm just blown away that no one's called something Wonder Wash. This one was really fun because I got to play around with different clothing items and I played with all these colors and it just looks so cool. I've wanted to do like clothes washing types of things before, but I've just never had the chance to do it. The next one of this shape is going to be one that one of you also suggested. So you suggested the washing one but also this one and it was liquid knowledge and I love the idea of liquid knowledge I think it's so silly to like take this liquid knowledge before a test because you haven't studied hard enough or even just to learn something about something straight away so with this one I really wanted it to look like this sketchbook of different subjects that you would potentially take liquid knowledge for and luckily I just had these chrysanthos underglazed pencils gifted to me at a recent market they came and visited my store and purchased a few of my pieces while it's giving me these and these are literally pencil versions of the paints that I have and they have a pencil finish so you get that really cool sketchily look with them and they are so so perfect this is the first time I am trying them out and I am blown away with how cool these are so I decided I would do these like little motives that represent different subjects so I've got like my A and I've got my F for failing and then I've got all the little like language I've got math I've got science I've got music drama all the different motives of different subjects that you would probably do at school was the inspiration behind this sketchbook like a sketchbook you had when you were in high school but with these these pencils I discovered that you have to do it on bisque because you saw before I tried to draw on them at greenware stage and it just like kind of carves into it and doesn't leave a mark on the pottery so I had to bisque this one but once it was bisque it was so cool I had so much fun sketching all these little ideas and little math things and little globes and science experiments on them the other thing I learned about these is they do smudge really easily so I'm glad I worked the neck down because you can't actually put your finger on it it's like really powdery on the surface the results of this are amazing by the way but just be aware if you're using these that they might smudge a little bit I think maybe if you put hairspray on it it might be fine but yeah because I was working on this and this is the first time using it I discovered that you need to be very careful of not smudging it so once I had all the motifs on this bottle I then was like oh how can I do the label so it looks like a notepad and I was like oh I'll do like lines and make the like liquid knowledge on the the lines of a notepad and gosh I, I can't wait for you to see this fired because it looks so good like it's exceptional to the point that I want to make more notebooky esque work like it was so fun I enjoyed it a lot and I hope you like it because I want to make more of them the next bottle shape is the longer neck one with the sort of roundy bottom I don't know how to distinguish the shapes but like the longer neck this is the last shape we're working with this one was also suggested by you and this was to improve your eyesight either far-sighted or short-sighted and I'm calling this one eyesight elixir so I did these really bold eye shapes in pop colors and I feel like that kind of plays onto different aspects of eyesight yeah that one was really cool I, I enjoyed painting that one and just for a different pattern that I've never really used before and I feel like I could use that eye pattern in other stuff you also suggested that you would love a potion to talk to your cats. So <laughs> I decided to do this one, which is called the Catversation Kombucha. Uh, so cat conversations and it is a kombucha and this one features a ginger cat and its tail wraps around the neck of the bottle and then it's got two little mice now a few people were like well you you can already understand what cats are trying to say but cats can be quite secretive and they don't really tell you much and sometimes they're very clear with their communication but not always so I feel like this is a necessary potion in fact I would have liked to have done just like an animal talking one in general the whole Eliza Thornberry cartoon TV show. I literally thought that 
that was a real thing you could do, that you, you could eventually grow up and be Eliza Thornberry and talk to animals. I wanted that so bad as a kid, Dr. Doodle. Oh my gosh. I just wanted to be able to talk to them. And I probably should have done like an animal generic one, but I also kind of like this idea of just like having this cat sitting on the potion bottle and having its tail wrap around. It feels very witchy given we know like mice and cats are associated with witches. So that's why I did end up just going for the cat angle. And I feel like I would love to talk to my cat in particular. My dogs are like very telling. Like they're just like very obvious what they want and they're very just like chill. But I feel like a cat would be like so much more intelligent. <laughs> no offense to my dog but I just feel like my cat is just like thinking about world domination and I want to know its plans for all the things. So I felt like this was a really cool topic to think about as I was painting this one. For the label of the cat Cat-fissation kombucha, I did it with a fluffy orange brush stroke so it looked like kind of like a fairy tale was making the script of that one. The next one I did, I feel like a few people will be like, well that's why we have Siri and I just want to forward that, that even with Siri I am shocking at this and this is a message mind reader and this is just to like reply people's messages, like I just get my friends just don't hear from me for months because I'm so bad at replying messages. It just feels like such a mental task. I wanted to do this message mind reader potion. So it just like reads my mind of what I'm like kind of thinking, and just sends it out in a message. So like when a friend sends me a life update and they're like, oh, I did this, this and this. I'll be like, yep, gotcha update. Thank you. We'll reply soon. We need a chat or we need a call or hey, I'm going to call you in five minutes instead of me like procrastinating or like getting distracted. I just just feel like this would help me so much and also just sending texts whenever I think of someone. You know how sometimes you just think of your friend and you're like oh I want to text them and just check up. It just sends them a message automatically. I feel like it would also be kind of funny. A con of that would be that it texts someone that you're thinking of that you doesn't know that you're thinking of them. So like a crush or something. I feel like that's a con of this one and it would be so funny if it like is reading your mind and you're thinking of like some person you're crushing on. It's like hey thank you cute. <laughs> it would be so like silly. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty open. I'd be happy with whatever brain thought I had was getting sent out. The last one I did was actually my studio assistant's idea is she was saying that she gets so annoyed in the evenings of having to get up when she's so tired and having to go brush her teeth before bed. And I just thought that this resonated so much and especially with kids, like when I was a kid, I hated brushing my teeth. So this one is a dental doer and it does all the dental stuff, even the dentist stuff. Sorry to all the dentists that are out there, but it does all that stuff. It just removes your wisdom teeth, it removes any of the bad stuff. And yeah, it just gives you perfect teeth all the time. I thought that was a great idea. So I did that one as well. It was then time to glaze all all these pieces up so I popped them into the glaze and then it was time to fire them in the kiln I did it by dunking them in one way and then the other way so I didn't have to touch up the fingerprints and then I just wiped off the bottom of the vases I didn't do any floral ones this week because I just honestly did not have time every single one of these was such a process to get the concept and make it come to life but I think that these vases are going to be so perfect for my designs aside from this spooky Halloween potion bottle aesthetic. They're just going to be so beautiful to bring to life and with my florals and the stuff that I usually paint. It is now time to open the kiln. I am very excited because all the potion bottles are so, so different and I think they're going to look so cool. Let's open it. Oh, they're great. Oh, they look so good. I think on first impression, I love how those pencils turned out. It looks like a sketch. That is so cool. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, that matches my top. <laughs> That's so cute. It's a bit softer than I was expecting with the white, but I kind of like it. I feel like it breaks the really bright reds up. Oh wow. These are just so different. On that pink one, I didn't go all the way up because I liked that it was like a subtle difference, but I like that that goes all the way up. Oh, that's so striking. 
Oh, I love it. This gives off Tim Burton Nightmare Before Christmas or Corpse Bride aesthetic, which I really like. I should actually do more Corpse Bride aesthetic, actually, like Tim Burton-esque stuff, because this was really fun and it looks so cool. And I just love this text. That is so cool. It really complements the shapes of the skulls. Okay. Wow. I thought I did this one white, but I've done this one with a yellow because I was looking at it for a second going, what? where is that yellow coming from? I swear I did this one <laughs> white, but I didn't. There's like a soft yellow sponging underneath that. I'm not sure if I like that. I feel like I wanted it white in the background. But I think that this is still very striking and very cool. Maybe it's nice. Maybe it softens the contrast a little bit. I really like those images. They're all so fun and they really pop. With the black outline, I nearly didn't do the black outline on the actual images themselves, but I think that is what makes this piece. <laughs> I love it. I love this one so much. Oh, the sweater looks so good. Oh, the little pegs. I kind of wish I thought about this design a bit better and could line up that line on the label with the line on the actual piece but at the same time i think it's cool i think it works because it's raised if it wasn't raised it would be weird okay i have i really like this one i think this one is my favorite oh that looks so cool oh my gosh it literally looks like a notebook. I love those pencils. They are very tricky to implement into my designs already, but for this exact project, they are the best. This is perfect. It makes me want to do like more sketchbook doodles on stuff. Gosh, it looks like a little notebook. Ah. <laughs> that is so good. So I did the font with a like stripey aesthetic to make it look like the toothpaste had written. <laughs> it was really hard to see it, so I had to outline it with black. Maybe I could have outlined it with a dark green, but. Oh wow, that one's so cute too. I like that the font is so hard to read because it's like the, the botany has like overgrown the label itself. It's a really cool touch, I think. Oh wow. These are just so fun. <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> I, I just think that these are such a diverse range and showcase of what you can do with pottery. And if you just have this one concept, which is kind of so fun about this week's video, is that I just worked with this potion bottle concept and could just do so much with it. <laughs> Look, the little mice are so cute. And there's our putter. Oh my goodness. And the tail wraps around. Oh, that is so cute. I love that. Oh, wow. This was the only one I didn't show you painting because it was tricky. I found this one the trickiest to film because I was trying to get all the bits symmetrical so that they are like a duplicate on either side, but in a different color. So you could get that it was like two places at once. I love this blue wing better, I think. This was such a fun challenge this week. I would love to do an even spookier version of these and perhaps do some ingredients instead of made up potions. But I did really like the idea of playing on the imaginary world of having these potions potions in our lives. I am already making more of these to turn into some of my normal designs with flowers which I hope I can bring to some upcoming markets and events and even put them onto the website. These will be going on the website in time for Halloween. I really love this shape and I loved uncovering it at Halloween so I could have fun playing around with the creativity behind this concept. Let me know in the comments what potion you would make if you could have any potion in the world. I'm giving you a bit of a look at each and every one of these up close and perfect personal so you can take in all of those details because it was a little bit hard to see what they visually look like as a whole piece and especially because you could only see that front on but they're just so dimensional like the front and the back look just as good as each other. Thank you so so much for watching another video of mine it means so much to have you here it supports what I do so so much don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos like this. Here is your sneak peek for the next reveal I am 
I'm doing my first smash or pass piece from that series and I'll have the results in that video and I am pouring more mystery molds to go with it. It's going to be such a fun video and I can't wait for you to see it. I'll see you then.